Welcome back to another episode of Exponential Africa. We were at the Singularity U South Africa Summit and this beautiful Kailami racetrack. And we are fortunate enough to be with Arturo Elizondo, who's the CEO of Clara Foods, a food biotech company that is uh, making real protein without using any animals. Clara is developing performance protein products, including the world's first animal-free egg white. Clara Foods leverages advanced fermentation to brew proteins that are cleaner, greener, and kinder. Arturo, thanks so much for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Super excited. So, um, Arturo, you speak <clears throat> a lot about the future of protein. Yeah. What made you uh, want to get into this? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's been a, it was a very long journey for me. I'm from Texas. I grew up eating two eggs for breakfast every morning, um, had a barbecue every Sunday, and eat, ate meat almost every single day for every single meal. And I never really thought about where my food came from until I began interning at the U.S. Department of Agriculture in the sub-agency that, that regulates all the slaughterhouses in the country. And it just blew my mind how massive the animal protein production complex really was. I had no idea that in the US we slaughtered over a million animals every single hour. Wow, a million animals an hour? Yeah. Wow. Um, and and it, it was mind blowing, especially because I had, I had never thought about where my food came from. And so this was, this was very eye opening for me. Um, and that really started this journey towards understanding more about our food system. And so then I eventually went to, I went to Harvard, studied government, and then went to Geneva to study diplomacy. And I used that as an excuse to focus on, on global food security. And I began reading about not just developing, developed countries, but developing countries in general and the world more broadly around this um, appetite towards more and more protein with more people entering the middle class and the population growing is that we needed to think about how are we going to feed um, a, a, a more expanding world with our limited resources. And, and I began reading about what it takes to actually make the protein that we need to make today. And it was even more mind blowing. Um, the, the amount of water, land, energy um, that, that it took to make the protein that people know and love today. Um, and I just felt this big need to want to, to, to find a better way to make it. I mean, I think that's so inspiring to hear that you've actually from learning, from discovering new yeah. information, it propelled you to want to make a difference in the world. And that's the power of learning that we underestimate. People say, I, I learn something, <clears throat> and, you know, it, maybe it will do nothing for my life. But yeah. if you learn something and it, it can actually change fundamentally what your life is about. That propelled you to start Clara Foods. And, mm -hmm. and you know, what were some of the research you had to do to, to start Clara Foods? Yeah, well, it, it, I think it's really interesting that you point out the education and the learning piece because I, I think what I didn't realize is how much education and learning happens outside of the classroom. And in some ways, how, how selective is our education in school? Like I had no idea that, that animal agriculture contributed more to greenhouse gas emissions than the entire transportation sector. I had no idea, I, I never really learned in school about where my food came from and what did it take to get, to get it to my plate. Um, and there was so much learning that had to happen outside of it and, I, um, and I, 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 it was one of those things that, you, that I had to research on my own. Um, and, and I began reading about what are all the ways that we can make protein today. Animals are one technology. Right, chickens, chickens, fish, pork, pigs, and cows are one kind of technology. You have plants that, that, that are other technologies, and then you have microorganisms as well. Um, and I, I began reading about all these different ways of, of, developing, of de developing proteins, and I fell in love with fermentation um, because it, it, it was a really scalable way of making proteins that, that, that have the same taste and nutrition of the proteins that people already know and love, but that because they're inherently, because you're using fermentation, it's a process that requires a lot less water, land, and resources to produce. And so after really zeroing in on that kind of technology, I left DC and I booked a one-way ticket to San Francisco. And I had no job, no place to stay, but I knew that I had to, I had to at least try to make a difference. It's really amazing, really cool. And I mean, why do you think it's, as, as humans, it's so important for us to think about how food is produced? And how, how and how where it comes from. The world can't 
tolerate us not knowing about where our food comes from because of how massively impactful it is. Right now, it's massively impactful for the negative, but it could be used to be massively impactful for, for the positive as well. Um, I think it's so important because our choices can make such a massive difference. And I remember growing up feeling like I'm just one person, I'm not gonna make a difference. What, what is me recycling this or, or eating on a, pl a plant-based diet? What is that going to, you know, what difference that does it make? But if you start, if you start starting at, you, you start at the individual level and then start influencing your neighbors and, and those around you, and eventually you have people all over the world having this massive movement and then therefore having this massive change. Wow, incredible. And I mean, you've done some amazing, amazing work in a very short space of time. You know, you've had some, a couple of rounds of funding and great investors and partners. What are some of the technologies and the, the equipment that you've uh, put in your lab? I, I came to see your lab. Yeah, yeah. It's quite crazy. All those different machines. Or like, what, what is some of that stuff and, and how does it work? Yeah, absolutely. So we leverage what, what, what you call um, biology as a technology. And right now, what the, the, the term used is synthetic biology, which is that we can 3D print DNA, um, and that, that's something that has been around now for decades. Um, and, and, and then we, we can essentially 3D print any DNA that codes for a particular protein. And because eggs are, are essentially the perfect food, um, particularly egg whites have some of the most bioavailable protein out there, um, okay. we essentially we can, you can go, go online, Google the kind of um, what, what DNA codes for what protein within the egg, and then, and then insert that into, the, into yeast and, and brew it. And so to, to allow that to happen, we have a lot of uh, chemical engineers and a lot of microbiologists, and we have a lot of fermenters um, that are very high tech that allow us to track the pH, the oxygen, et cetera, how much sugar, the, the nutrients that we need to get the yeast to be really happy to make protein very efficiently. And this technology actually started in pharma to make insulin for diabetics. Yes. So in the 1980s, before the 1980s, the only way a diabetic could get their protein, their insulin dosage, was by killing pigs. You had to kill a pig, extract the insulin protein from their pancreas, purify it, and then inject it into people. Sure. And that's how every diabetic got their insulin protein from. Oh, yeah. Guess how many pigs you what needed you to kill that? Huh? If you're kosher, yeah, it wasn't kosher, it wasn't halal, yeah. and it wasn't vegetarian. And, and because of the variability in just growing animals um, is that some people had reactions to it as well. And so there were a lot of problems endemic in that production. Sure. Um, and, 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 you know, just guess how many pigs? Um, two pigs. So you needed over 50,000 pigs Whoa. to make one kilo of insulin. Sure. That's and that's how all insulin used to be made. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. And Genentech, which sort of birthed the biotechnology industry, they're actually a few blocks from our office in South San Francisco, um, they found a way to, they were like, look, yeast and bacteria naturally make protein as well. Um, can we essentially uh, hack them to produce the insulin protein without using pigs? And sure. that, in the 1980s, that was hugely revolutionary. And now, fast forward to today, over 98% of insulin produced in the world today is made using fermentation. I mean, what, what do you see the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Will we stop killing animals? Is that, is that your vision? Is that, <clears throat> do you think that's going to become a reality for all of us? <laughs> well, I think we, the world is a very big place. And technology takes a long time to make its way into it, you know, in, into the, into the in, and make its way into the hands of everyone. Right? Look at computers and how long it took before we had computers that were the size of rooms, and now we have even better computers that are in the palms of our hands. Yes. But that that wasn't overnight, and so I think that ultimately the change is coming. However, I think that there are ways. Um, there are ways that, that I think these technologies can be complementary to our, currently, to our, to our current food production. Um, and I think especially 
in this day and age where most of our animal protein production is not happening with small farmers. I mean, that, that, that's not the problem of the food system. The problem is these massive industrial scale farms that produce a lot of toxic waste that, 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 that are, you know, are, are really bad for, for farmers um, and, and that ultimately are bad for the planet as well. Um, I think that, it, that my goal would be to, um, to see the elimination of this massive industrial farming um, and find ways that we can either support small farmers or other technologies using plants and fermentation and cells, et cetera. And I think the future of food looks like there will be choice for everyone. That's that it's not just, right now, the only way of, 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 of your own the burgers for the most part, right, or eggs or whatever are from animals. And that's the status quo. In eggs, there's that's eggs, you know, for, for, for egg products, it's like 99% of the market. Egg replacers are such a small part of it. For veggie patties, they're making a, they're making a lot of inroads. Yes. And so I think in the future, it's that it won't be so dominated by one particular industry, but there will be a lot of choice for consumers. So people can ultimately make the choice themselves and pick and choose what they want to eat. Awesome. No, thank you so much. It's really yeah. fascinating. It's been a great show. We've run out of time. Um, I can't wait to try Arturo's eggs as soon as he sends a sample. <laughs> And uh, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Make sure to like and subscribe to our page. And we'll see you on the next Exponential Africa. Keep smiling. Nice to meet you all. <laughs>